how many of us know someone who's lost a good amount of weight only to see them put it back on and then some? Maybe it's been you. Do you ever wonder what's going on here? How can this happen when we work so hard to lose that body fat? Well, the answer is that your body and evolution is actually working against you um, to keep the fat off. So if we don't have the knowledge and the understanding of why this is happening to us, it gets really easy to fall in the trap of just thinking, oh, I just have no willpower. I have no discipline. It's just who I am or other limiting beliefs. So in this video, let's dive into what's happening here. Let's talk about how to avoid the weight regain, how to avoid the yo-yo diet. So the first step in keeping weight off is going to be um, choosing a diet that is sustainable in the long term. And I use the word diet as in just like what, what food we eat. So if we don't have a sustainable approach off the start, there it's a false thinking and thinking that you can do one thing to lose weight and then when the diet's over you can do something else and sustain it that just never ever works so we need to find something that's sustainable for the long term so while you're doing the diet you need to be asking yourself is this something i can do forever and if it's not then we need to adjust our approach now that doesn't mean that when you're in a calorie deficit or in a diet um that it's going to feel easy and um, sustainable all the time. There will be moments that are hard, but the style in general should feel something that is sustainable. So instead of like cutting out all carbs or cutting out all your favorite foods or having zero sugar, um, you want to choose something that is something you could maintain forever, even though you're eating less and you may not feel like you could eat that small amount of food forever that's okay, that we can adjust, but the whole general version of the diet should be something that's sustainable. And we did talk about this in um, a previous video with the flexible dieting, so please refer to that one if you have not seen that yet. So if you can't see yourself sticking to it one year from now, you might wanna rethink your approach. You guys know how it is. Every week there seems to be a new diet out there that's promising to solve all of our problems. It's gonna be this magic weight loss pill. Um, don't even get me started on weight loss products. But there's all these diets out there that promise just the world to us. And we've been just marketed to and just given all these false promises. And while the diets do usually work, the problem is that they don't actually work in the long term. So what good is it if we go through all that trouble to lose the weight and then we can't keep it off in the long term? It really doesn't get us anywhere. And actually what um, the, research sh the research shows that the more diets one person does, actually the heavier and the more weight they actually actually end up gaining in the long term. Diets that have a start and end date are problematic, especially ones that eliminate food. While you're in the diet, you're very motivated to follow the plan, do exactly as is. But once you finish the diet, you're left asking, okay, now what? Can I eat those foods now? And you're left just like so looking forward to the foods you haven't been able to eat throughout the whole diet that you no longer have any control over how much you can eat and nor the understanding. So I'm not here to say that diets don't work. All of them out there, they honestly do work. They will help people lose the fat. The problem is that they don't help them keep it off forever. So I think it's six out of seven people, overweight people in their lifetime will lose a significant amount of weight. However, um, within one year, 80% of the people will gain it back. Within two years, 85% of the people will gain it back. And within three years, 95% of the people will gain all their weight back. And what's even worse, a lot of those people actually gain more weight back than what they even started with. So the question should not be how much can you lose, but can you keep it off? And can you keep it off for three years, five years, 10 years? For those who are chronic dieters, you probably know every time that you go to lose weight, it gets harder and harder every single time. Also, the weight seems to come back easier and easier every single time. So this constant cycle of losing, gaining, losing, losing, gaining is called weight cycling. And this is something that we are trying to completely put behind us and something that is no longer a problem because we have taken the step to actually learn and do something about this. So dieting in itself does not make you fatter. Um, it's the way we go about it that sometimes that ends up being the, um, the outcome. Now, a lot of you may have heard of people talking about like going in starvation mode and gaining weight. That literally doesn't exist. Can you imagine being lost in the forest and gaining weight because you're not eating? It completely defies the laws of physics. That is just absolutely impossible. 
What is happening though is the body's defense system when someone is trying to undereat. Um, there's a lot of things that maybe they aren't aware that they're doing or not admitting that they're doing. Dieting with the goal of losing body fat basically is a controlled starvation scenario. Um, Paul McLean and Lane Norton have both um, discussed these three prongs of the defense system in the body. So the first prong is to defend and that's to prevent further weight loss. So when you are in a diet and all of a sudden your weight stalls and you can't make any more progress, that's your body defending further weight loss. Um, also known as like metabolic adaptation. And then we have restore, which is an increased rate of weight gain when there is enough energy being consumed. So when you start eating more food again, um, an increased rate of weight gain happening. This is due to increasing hunger and having better fat storage ability. And the third prong is prevent, and that is to de decrease the probability of losing body fat in the future. Okay, so why would this happen? So as I said, dieting is a controlled form of starvation. So even though we know in our minds that there's food everywhere, we can get food at the drop of a dime if we wanted to, it's everywhere. However, our bodies don't understand that and our DNA is wired to make us survive. Our number one goal as humans is just to survive. So even if you're overweight, um, over fat, obese, and your body is not exactly healthy, your body is still happy that it's alive. So the worst thing that could happen is that you run out of energy and you die. So our lives are so different than they once were. Like it's only been really in the last hundred years we've had this plethora of food around us. So our bodies are wired to sense famine and do all these things to keep us alive, which is amazing. <laughs> like the body is truly amazing. It's just our lifestyle no longer matches um, the way our bodies are set up. When food is sparse, our metabolism is gonna slow down. Our whole body is gonna get really efficient at using those calories, energy. And we're also gonna get very efficient at storing energy when there is enough food around. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is body fat set point. So this is the place that your body loves to be at. So everyone has this. There is a certain number that your body just enjoys to stay at and it just easily gravitates towards that. So when you lose weight, it very easily gravitates back towards it if you eat in excess, um, or also if you're someone who's trying to gain weight, if you stop pressing the calories, then your body will kind of work back down. So it works just like a thermostat. And the hormone that it's controlling this is called leptin. So think of leptin in the body like a thermostat. So if you have the thermostat set to 20 degrees and it gets really warm in the house, then the AC is gonna kick in to bring that temperature back down to 20. Same thing if the temperature drops, then the heat's gonna kick in to bring the temperature back to 20. So your body is always doing that. Your body loves to be in homeostasis and stay the same. So your hormone leptin is going to be regulating that through your fat tissue. So as fat cells shrink, leptin is decreased, hunger is increased, and metabolic rate is slowed. Try, trying to drive it back to the set point. And the reverse is also true. If fat cells um, expand or grow, then the leptin will increase, hunger will decrease, metabolic rate will increase, driving it back again to that set point. I'm sure you all know someone who's dieted for a vacation only to go there, eat all the food and gain that 15, 10, 15 pounds back in seven days. That is absolutely possible. That may have even happened to yourself. So this is why this is happening. The body is in an enhanced state of being able to really capture that those um, calories and store them after a prolonged period of dieting. And every time you die, you're activating this defense system. And the more you do it, the stronger the signal gets, making it harder and harder to lose fat in the long term and sometimes even resulting in fat gain in the long term. So back to the chronic dieters, the people that are always, always in a diet yet they seem to not be losing weight and often they are increasing their body fat. So how is this happening? It's simply because they are constantly interrupting their calorie deficit with overfeeding periods. And when your body's in that state that really easily holds on to calories, holds on to energy, holds on to body fat, that's when you see that cycle happening. So they might, every time you see them, they're like, watching what they eat and they're eating very carefully. And like six days of the week, they're eating in a calorie deficit. 
but then they have that one day where they like no longer control themselves and they're maybe um, eating food in the closet or they go out to a friend's house and just overeat without even knowing it. Their body stores that fat very easily. And then the next day they go back into that calorie deficit, triggering the defense system again. And the cycle just continues and continues and continues, resulting in them always dieting, but never getting anywhere. So this is why when we set up this challenge, we are very clear on this is not a six week thing. This is just to get you started for the rest of the year, the rest of the five years, the rest of your lifetime, however long it takes. So it's not about seeing how like hardcore you can be for the six weeks, seeing how much weight you can lose and win the challenge. This is truly about like understanding what we're trying to tell you here. So it's understanding what's in our food, what are good choices, why are those good choices? Um, it's understanding that this is a lifestyle, lifestyle change, that there is no start and no end date. It's understanding that it's not a yo-yo diet and it's something that you need to kind of adopt as like, I am changing my life for the rest of my life with this. It's not, I'm going to do this till the challenge ends and then who knows, I'll, whatever, I try next. It's like, okay, I am listening to what they're saying. I'm applying this day to day. There is no end to this. This is it. So maybe you're even at a point in this challenge where you've kind of fallen off a little bit. It's important that you just don't think of it as like, oh, I have fallen off. I'm now done. It's no, it's, you need to just keep going. This is how, this is how it is for all of us. We all fall off. Like there's always going to be times where we're, we, I don't want to call it like slip up or mess up or anything like that, but maybe we're not doing exactly what we have laid out. But that doesn't mean you ever need to stop. You just, okay, <laughs> the meals are just going to keep coming. So like the next one, I'll make sure I have vegetables. The next meal, I'll make sure I'll have protein. Um, I'll just make sure I drink more water tomorrow. It's always just, you got to just keep going. This never, ever ends. Okay. The things we laid out here in our process at the lair is about healthy eating. It's not necessarily about dieting either. So make sure that you understand those two different things. Um, eating vegetables, eating protein, um, eating whole foods, drinking water, all those things are just for overall health and wellness. If you want to actually lose body fat, then you need to make sure that your um, intake is regulated in some way. Now you can do it by making sure you're having enough lean protein and vegetables and whole foods. Sometimes that's enough to naturally do it. Sometimes it's not and you need to um, like track your intake in some way. But do know that the, the things we're saying here does not necessarily equal fat loss. And you shouldn't only do those things if you want to have fat loss. What we're promoting here is for just a healthy lifestyle in general. And if you want to chase the, the trail of fat loss, then you need to make sure you're in a calorie deficit. And if you are gonna do that, you need to make sure that you do not take it lightly. I highly encourage you to watch this whole video because it's very important to know what to do, what not to do. Um, because dieting is not something that you really want to screw up. You want to know how to do it properly and you need to know how to undo it properly. So going through the reverse diet and going through the maintenance phases and really understanding that um, so you don't suffer from this yo-yo dieting your whole life. It's really going to help understanding why the things are happening to you after or in the diet and after to help you keep the weight off forever so metabolic adaptation is what is the main driver of why this is so difficult so as you consume less calories your metabolic rate is going to slow so you've probably heard people say before oh i have a slow metabolism or that person has a fast metabolism um in today's day and age we tend to talk about metabolism like it's like an organ or something it isn't it's just us the way our whole body kind of works as a whole so generally metabolic adaptation will mean a decrease in your basal metabolic rate, a decrease in your NEAT, which is your like non-exercise type activity. So everything you do in a day, like me fidgeting right now, um, standing, anything that's not actually exercise would be your NEAT. And then also um, alterations to your, your hormones is also going to make a difference. So like I was talking about the leptin before, insulin, ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, all these are gonna affect your metabolic rate. So I did talk about this in the macro video, but I wanna touch on it again because I think it's really, really important. Um, the importance of not cutting too many calories too soon, that's gonna set you up for failure in the long run as well because it's gonna slow your metabolic rate down so much that it's gonna be really hard to sustain in the long term. 
So say for myself, my metabolic rate is 2,300 calories. That's how many calories I can eat every day, not gain weight, not lose weight, not have any change to my body with the amount of activity that I'm doing. Now say I'm like, okay, I wanna lose um, 30 pounds. So I'm gonna cut my calories down to 1,500. Now I'm 170, my goal weight's 140. Um, say I get down 20 pounds and just all of a sudden, I just, nothing happens anymore. I'm just at a complete plateau. I've reached that plateau because my metab metabolic rate has gone from 2,300 and it slowly dropped. Say that took me, I don't know, three months to lose 20 pounds. It slowly dropped down to 1,500. So now my calorie deficit that I thought I was in is actually meeting my metabolic rate. So my metabolic rate used to be here, my calorie deficit was here, it's now come down to the same. So now I'm not in a calorie deficit anymore, my body has adjusted. It's made me more tired. It's made me um, just want to have like less activity in the day, made me park closer to things. Um, I don't really feel like going for walks, I don't feel like getting up early and doing my exercise. Um, I'm feeling just more lazy. Those kind of things all slow your metabolic rate over time. Maybe I probably lost muscle mass. Um, I'm maybe not pushing myself as hard in workouts anymore. I'm not recovering well, so then I can't work out as much. All those things all come into play. So if I still have 10 more pounds to lose, now I need to cut my calories down even lower to the point where it's gonna be really hard for me to actually sustain that. And then say I do cut them down low, I'm like, hey, just last 10 pounds, I can do it. And my metabolic rate slows to like 13, 1400 calories. And now I'm like, hey, I'm ready to end my diet. It's time to go back to maintenance. But if I go back to 2,300 calories, I'm gonna gain weight because my metabolic rate has come down so far. So if you cut too soon, that's what's gonna happen. And it's gonna be so hard for me to maintain my weight because I'm like, oh my God, all I can eat is 1,500 calories. As soon as I eat more, I gain weight. And it's just gonna be a really frustrating process. So if I was to stay at much more moderate calories, like 1,900 and just slowly dwindle down, the point where I started to feel unsustainable, maybe we'd take a diet break, go back to 2300, let my metabolic rate rise back up, then I'd be in a much better place long term. And I know we all have these thoughts of like, yeah, but I just want to lose the weight right now. <laughs> and I mean, who doesn't? We all want to. But imagine, especially if you've been doing this before and you've just, you've tried and tried and tried and it's been like 10 years and you haven't gotten anywhere. Imagine if you just lost 10 pounds this year. What if you lost 10 pounds in 12 weeks and then you maintained it for the rest of the year. And then next year you lost another 10 pounds and then you maintain it for the rest of the year. And then the year after that you lose maybe another 10 pounds and maintain it for the rest of the year. Sure, it took you three years, but you felt great during it. You didn't regain your weight back and you're in a really, really good place metabolically that you actually will be at your goal weight eventually and your metabolic rate is gonna be at that 2300 and you'll be set up in a completely sustainable approach that you almost feel like you're not even dieting or you're not even in like a lifestyle change it's just like oh this is just how I eat and this is actually really easy for me to sustain I can't believe how much food I can eat and not gain weight you don't have that rapid cycle of regaining weight because your metabolic rate is so low it truly is life-changing when you think about it in just a very long-term way and like allowing it to be very slow and I know we've heard this before a hundred times but I think a lot of people don't really connect the dots of what slow weight loss truly means like everyone's like oh yes the slower the better but like what if that meant 10 pounds in an entire year what if it meant 10 pounds in three months and then the rest of the entire year is spent just eating lots of food training hard loving life and sustaining your weight and then trying it again you see what i'm saying i hope that really makes sense to you and i hope that really resonates with a few people um now you might be thinking like, oh my God, like I've already screwed this up though. Like I'm already at like 1500 calories, now what? Um, there is some stuff I'm gonna talk about that there is a way to, just like your metabolic rate will slow down, it also adapts to go back up. Um, but you might be thinking like, holy shit, like this is this is kind of scary. Like my body gets in a, in a place that it like easily regains fat, like it can regain more fat cells. Um, I'm like, my hormones change, so I'm hungrier and like all these things are working against me. And you might be thinking like, this is like kind of freaky um, and scary. And honestly, I hope you are kind of scared and I hope you're actually really paying attention because this is the point of this video is to wake people up to be like, you can't just willy nilly 
diet all the time and expect this to work. You have to like really, really plan it out, really commit and really understand the after part of the diet. I mean, the statistics alone are terrifying. Like 5% of people lose the weight and keep the weight off. That's horrible. Like for the amount of people who do it, ugh, like that is honestly heartbreaking. So our goal here at The Lair is to make you guys smarter, make you guys understand it and have you guys have that lasting um, result. And hopefully we can increase that 5% to maybe be a little bit higher and a little bit more hopeful. Okay, so I just want to kind of rewind for a second and go back to the three prongs um, of the body's defense system because that's really important to understand. So the first one um, about defense, so preventing further weight loss, and that's when I just talked about, about having your metabolic rate um, adapt too much. So make sure you don't cut calories too soon, too fast. Make sure you're just like kind of riding it out. Let it take time. Let your body like adjust. Um, if you go three days and you haven't lost weight, just ride it out. Don't cut your calories further. Um, there will be signs that you're in a calorie deficit. If you really pay attention to your body, you'll be hungry. You'll just kind of be a little bit more tired or fatigued. Um, those could be signs that you just need to hang on a little bit longer, especially if you're a woman, if you're a woman, your weight is going to fluctuate a ton to the point where you're only going to really see true changes in your weight the week after your cycle, um, starts. And I know that's like really disappointing to hear because it's like, I gotta wait a whole month to see if I'm doing it right. Um, but you can kind of tell, like you can tell by like feeling um, how your body feels and stuff. But the, the, the number, and with measurements as well, but the number on the scale is going to be tricky. So if you're a woman, um, you're really only gonna see like the first two weeks of your cycle is gonna be kind of accurate. The last two weeks of your cycle, your weight is probably gonna be higher than it truly is. A few things to help with that metabolic adaptation would be eating enough protein. We've covered that in two videos now. That is absolutely massive. That helps you keep on to your lean body mass, which is metabolically expensive, like holding onto your muscle. The more muscle you lose, the more your metabolic rate is going to slow. So the more you can weight train, the more protein you can eat is going to help you um, um, not see that like big dip in metabolic rate and also not eating too little too soon. The restore part of the prong is when your body's trying to get itself back up to your body weight set point. So once you've lost the weight, you need to understand that this is now not the time to get complacent. If there is a time to get complacent, this ain't it. When you've reached your goal, now you need to be like, okay, now I need to be like super diligent and I need to reverse this diet. My um, diligency is not over yet. I need to still like really be on track with it until my body is at a set point that it seems to be happy with. So it's very easy, like I talked about the people that go on vacation and then gain 10, 15 pounds back in seven days. That is absolutely possible. You can spend three months losing weight and you can gain it back in a couple of weeks by chronically overfeeding or excessively overfeeding. So know that your body is in a prime place to refill its fat stores and also add more fat cells after a diet. Remember your body is trying to live and survive. So think of yourself starving in the wild. If you come across some food, your body's goal would be to save that and be as efficient with it as possible, store it for later in any hopes of you surviving. So something I like to explain is thinking about your body fat cells like a sponge. So when they're, when you're ready to lose weight, they're full. You've been overeating. Um, you're just like, I'm not feeling the way I want to. Your body fat cells are full. As you lose weight, the body fat cells get smaller and smaller and smaller. They don't ever really go anywhere. They just get smaller. Um, but just like a dry spo sponge, it's ready to expand the minute it gets more water or more food. So if you just finished your diet, um, you've been dieting for like 12, 18 weeks, you've lost 10, 20 pounds, and now you're like, okay, I did it. I'm going to go back to the way I was eating. That's when your body is just going to fill those cells up because it's been in this state of starvation, even though you know that there's food ever, everywhere else you could have eaten, your body doesn't know that. And its only goal is to sustain energy and store energy. So you have enough to survive if famine continues. So if you start eating food, food becomes more plentiful than it absolutely needed in that moment. It's going to store it. So the fat cells are going to fill back up. Now, the other thing that happens um, when you've had a prolonged period of 
famine or dieting, your body has this trump card where it can actually add fat cells. So if you have been dieting and then you go overeat on vacation, your body is just going to start creating more cells and those are just more cells that can fill up. And that's generally why you'll see people who lost a significant amount of weight and then end up larger down the road is because not only did their fat cells refill up, but they also added more fat cells that also filled up. So really keep that in mind that the diet, I can't say this enough, the diet does not end. This never ends. You need to continue on with what you're doing, but just in a, a different amount of food in a, um, in a proper approach, which we're going to talk about in the reverse dieting. So yeah, just know that after you've reached your goal or after you've lost some body fat, it's really crucial that you don't just like um, carelessly overfeed because your those spin sponges are just ready to just fill right back up. And the third prong um, about preventing fat loss in the future, that comes into play with also the lowering of the metabolic rate. Um, it is shown that when you diet and lower your metabolic rate, it actually stays low for a very, very long time, especially if you don't do anything, any type of work like reverse diet to actually bring it back up. Um, they looked at the, the biggest loser um, participants, which we've known, um, or most people know that they lose a crazy amount of weight, the show ends and they gain all the way back. It's actually quite a terrible show and the way it's just gone about is just kind of awful. Um, but they've tested their metabolic rate and even though they've gained all their weight back, their metabolic rate is still significantly lower than when they started. So it's really important to take all the precautions to not lower your metabolic rate, as I said before, weight training, eating of protein, all the things. Um, and then making sure you're not always chronically dieting. So the thing that most people will do if they're just not knowledgeable on this is they'll lose the weight and then they'll always kind of like revert back to what they did to lose the weight and they never really like learn a maintenance phase. So if your maintenance calories are here and then you diet here and then you're done your diet and you just try to keep this forever but it's like really hard because you like to eat more food and it's fun and you're doing this all the time then we start to see the up and down of weight happening all the time where it's like oh god like I I went to whatever I had Valentine's Day on the weekend my weight went up five pounds so I got to go back to my diet that I was doing and then you do that and then your weight kind of stabilizes back to where you were before and then something else comes up and it goes up and down so this is where it's important to learn um that the diet phase is not the same as the maintenance phase. The diet phase is going to be the place where you're hungry and eating less, eating that in that calorie deficit. And then once you've reached your goal, you need to incrementally start adding the macros and nutrients back in to elevate your um, metabolic rate back up to where it was. But you can't just go from here to here. It needs to be a step process that's very slow and gradual to allow your body to adapt. So for those who really struggle the second, third time around, it's because they've lowered their metabolic rate. They never really did any work to bring it back up. And then they've done this yo-yo thing where they overeat, undereat, overeat, undereat till the point where they just gain the weight back. And then when they go to diet in the future, they're like, I'll just go back to what I did the first time. And your body's like, nope, because that's where we maintain now. So you're gonna have to go lower and lower and lower. Also really think about how your hunger is coming into play here. So like I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of people think like, oh, I just don't have willpower. I don't have the discipline to stay at it. Like once I lose weight and as soon as I look at carbs, I just like gain weight again. Keep in mind what's truly happening here. Your body is trying to make you eat. It's been in this prolonged state of starvation and it's like, okay, girl, you got to find some food. We can't sustain this forever. If we don't ever find food, eventually we're going to run into these fat stores if we keep losing them at this rate. So we need to find some food. So you are hungry. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you reach your goal, you're now in this state of hunger. And when you go to something that is out of your controlled environment, it's going to be very hard to control yourself because there are literally things physiologically in your body, like your actual ghrelin hormone is elevated, your leptin is suppressed that's making you have a hard time controlling that. So I find personally that when I understand it as like a science point of view, it's like, oh, okay, this isn't just like me being weak. This is like a process that's happening that I need to try to override it before it takes over. 
And if you find yourself in a situation where you're like, I don't know, I, I just can't control it. I can't stop eating. Just like take a breath and be like, this isn't just me being weak. This is something that's happening in my body. And I need to just remove myself for a minute, gather myself, come up with a game plan and just work your way through it. Just remember how hard you work to get there and that it's really not going to be easy afterwards either. And that's why it's not done yet. You need to put in a little bit more work until you really get to the point where it does actually become easy and sustainable. I don't want you to feel like, well, holy God, like this is going to be impossible for the rest of my life. It's really not. And honestly, once you are fed, you will lose all those feelings of like being so hungry and just like out of control with a sweet tooth. Um, when you're in a place of being well fed, you might find that you're a completely different human. And lots of you guys I know have maybe even never experienced that because you've always tried you've always been just trying to watch what you eat a little bit. Like there's always people who are like just always watching what they eat. They never just like freely eat. Um, but when you truly learn what your maintenance is and truly eat at that amount for a long amount of time, you will be amazed at how you feel. You'll be like, I'm, I'm no longer hungry. I no longer have these crazy cravings. I can easily pass on dessert. It's fine. And that's a result of actually being fed in a fed state where your body's happy. It's getting everything that it needs. And it's not telling you, you got to go find food. You got to go find food. You're not getting enough. So the most important thing here, um, when you're embarking on a diet and also when you're finishing a diet is understanding where your maintenance calories are. So if you're, before you're even going to embark on a true fat loss thing, and like with this challenge here, the, you maybe were already kind of embarking on that. This video is maybe coming a little bit too late for you, but that's okay. What we were doing in the challenge was to set up like the really base habits that are important whether or not you want to lose weight or not um but if you do now if you're thinking like okay i want to like really continue this and i really want to lose like x amount of body fat then go hard um what you want to do is i know this is gonna be annoying because people want the results right now and they don't want to wait but i would highly recommend figuring out what your maintenance calories are first and then cutting from there because if you just eat less, then you might be like that example of cutting 800 calories for no reason, lower, lowering your metabolic rate really far. So I encourage you find your metabolic rate, your current maintenance calories, and then start cutting from there. And then also if you have been cutting, you've lost some weight. I encourage you if it's time to take that diet break and work your way up to maintenance, which we're going to talk about how to do that. Okay. So once it's time to do a reverse diet, you either reach your goal or you've reached a mini goal and you maybe have more to go, but you need to take a little bit of a break because as I've talked about, we can't just diet forever. Um, so your options are either go back to what you were doing before and end up with the 95% of everyone else or take a break or stop the cut and go back to maintenance and sustain that for as long as necessary. That could be until the end of time or until you're ready to cut again. So the reverse diet, I want to first preface this by saying, this is absolutely not the easiest part. This is the hardest part. I know you might think that, well, I'm not in the calorie deficit anymore. I get to eat more food. That sounds really great. But the trick is when you're in the calorie deficit, you have this goal of losing weight, which is ultimately really exciting and what you are looking for. So you have that deep motivation of seeing the progress week to week and chasing that. And it's like, I'll pass on that pizza because man, I've been working hard and I want to see that that progress next week and you have that like strong motivation once you get to maintenance you've already reached your goal and now it's like well like i don't know i've reached my goal i could probably have that piece of pizza it's just one um and i'm not saying you can't have pizza it's just it can be the start of a slippery slope is all i'm saying so when you're on maintenance it is really hard to stay diligent because you no longer have something that you're chasing every week. Now you're just staying the same. It's not near as exciting. It's really easy to be like, well, it doesn't really matter. Like I'll probably just stay the same weight and you might see it like incrementally increase. And then you start to be like, Oh, like whatever. I've already gone up a little bit and that can be the start of a slippery slope. So reverse dieting is absolutely the hardest part. The biggest problem I see in mission nutrition with all the clients we coach, People do it for a while, they see great results, and they're like, I think I'm ready to try it on my own. And we're just like, oh no, we know how this plays out. <laughs> you 
you're gonna gain all the weight back and it's gonna look like it didn't work. So this part is so hard. Honestly, I've done the reverse before and it is absolutely the hardest part. So I'm gonna go over how to do it properly, but I want you to take that away that do not think that once the cut is over that the work is done because it is very, very hard to go through the reverse. It's mentally very difficult and it's hard to even like stick to the numbers because they are still restrictive and you're like, the diet's over, like I just wanna eat more, but you can't do that quite yet. So just like your metabolic rate decreases as you diet, the goal with the reverse is to slowly build that metabolic rate back up. So the way we do that is you're going to keep your protein the same because if you follow the macro video, um, you'll know that you need to keep your protein very, very high in a calorie deficit to keep your metabolic rate from dropping. So that should already be where it needs to be. If anything, your protein can maybe go down a little bit as long as you're going to be eating enough calories. So if you're eating enough energy in general, it's okay for your protein to be a little bit lower because you have enough to sustain. Um, but if you're in a calorie deficit, it's really, really important to keep protein high so we don't lose any or as little as possible um, muscle mass. So you do want to take this step fairly slow. There are two different ways of doing it. You can either um, add a whole bunch at once. You're going to sacrifice gaining a little bit of body fat with it, but with the um, pleasure of just getting to eat more food quickly. Or you can go really slow and really incrementally add where you shouldn't actually add any body fat at all. Um, but it kind of still feels like a cut because you're only adding like very little bits at a time. Your goal is to add calories each week. Um, you're going to make sure that your body weight stays within 0.2 to 0.5% of what it was when your cut was done week to week. So you can keep increasing your calories as long as your weight is kind of hanging within that range each week, then you can keep increasing your calories. So to increase your calories, as I said, you can keep your protein the same and up your carbs and fat by two to 10%. Now I understand that's a really big range, but just think of it as a range. So if you're wanting to go a little bit more conservative, then you can stay around the two to four to five um, percent. And then if you wanna be more aggressive, you can go up to the 10. So if you're at a point in your diet where you're like, I am just, I'm just at my wit's end, I'm really hungry, I just can't do this anymore, then you maybe wanna go a little bit more on the aggressive side. Um, and then keep in mind too, you can start aggressive and then maybe in a couple of weeks when you're like, okay, I feel a little bit better now, um, then you can bring it down a little bit. Um, if you're someone who are, you're just feeling like, okay, I am like at my goal, I feel pretty good, I could go a little bit longer if I need to, then you can do a little bit of a slower increase and start at 2%, maybe to 4% and just see how it goes. And you're gonna continue on that week to week as long as your weekly average of weight is staying relatively normal. I also wanted to point out, if you go from eating not very many carbs because you're in the cut to eating more carbs as you keep um, adding it, your weight is gonna show a little bit higher. But I highly encourage you to take photos because as I talked about in the macro video, um, carbohydrates hold on to water. So if you are slowly increasing your calories by very little and it's coming from carbs, your muscles are gonna soak up that glycogen. And if you're hydrated, the muscle is gonna hold on to the water. So you might find that the scale weights up, but you actually look leaner and tighter. So don't only go by the scale, also go by how you feel and how you perform. And you might know better than the scale tells you um, whether or not you're taking that nutrition in and doing what you need with it rather than actually storing it as body fat. So if you kind of take that all into account, you'll have a better idea of like, can I add more this week? And yep, you just keep adding and adding and adding until you start to see your um, change in weight go out of that range. Or if you've um, upped weight within that range for three consecutive weeks, you might be at your maintenance. So once you've reached that, then I would take about 5% off of that and you can just continue on with that for a while and maybe forever. Um, some people might get a couple months down the road and be like, I just wanna see if I could maybe, maybe my metabolic rate has increased since then. I'm gonna see if I can push a little bit more and just continue the same cycle. You will likely find that if you keep your protein the same and you keep adding carbs and fat every week, 
it's not going to take long at all like literally two weeks so you're going to feel just so much more at ease with um having a lot more carbs and fat to eat in a, in a day and it's just gonna all of a sudden just like the restriction is gonna just lift from you and you'll just be like wow this actually really does feel super sustainable and the longer you go the more you increase your metabolic rate you'll be like this was it all along <laughs> this is what i needed i have lost the weight and now i can keep the weight off eating food that i love and i'm surprised how much i can eat without gaining any extra body fat and how much i can just go out and enjoy social functions and you'll also notice too that when you are eating at maintenance your body's not in that defense um state so when you are at maintenance and you go have like a night out with friends or whatever your weight might go up for a couple days but you'll see that it drops right back down very quickly because your body has now found that new set point but you have to hang out at maintenance long enough and be diligent at that phase long enough to achieve that and it also gets a lot easier to sustain this because you can start adding in those treat foods once you have more carbs and fat to play with then that's when you can start adding in um, the foods that you just really love to eat and you don't uh, feel like you can no longer have those like when you're on the diet it's like I don't have room for chips I don't have room for that cookie or whatever on as I talked about in the macro video you can make room for it but it kind of results in a lot of sacrifice whereas when you're in maintenance the goal is to not obviously fill all of your extra calories with the junk food um, you should be eating more like rice and sweet potatoes and avocado and olive oil and fattier meats and all that stuff but there's certainly more room for that treat food and you lose the the feeling of like ooh, like the next time I'm around cookies like I hope I can control myself because you know you're like I can have one today I can have one tomorrow and once you start being able to add in that treat food and still being able to eat all your other food as well that's super high in nutrients um, then it gets like really, you'll just, you'll understand how sustainable it truly feels. Lastly, I just want to talk about kind of setting yourself up for success. If you are going to continue this as a fat loss journey, um, I want you to just be really aware that you need to be really, really ready to do this. You need to tell the people in your life that you are truly doing this and you're going to give it your all. Um, you need to be fully dedicated to maybe give up drinking for a bit, um, maybe to like only get certain foods at restaurants and just really adopt that because like I said before, this really isn't something you wanna mess around with. You're really talking about changing your metabolic rate if you do this improperly for too long. Um, so if you are gonna embark on a fat loss journey, I highly encourage you for one to get a coach if you don't really know what you're doing and there are many coaches out there. I, of course, am going to pitch our Mission Nutrition because we've been doing it for a while and this is the exact approach that we do teach. Um, but having a coach in general really does help and you can go wherever you want. I, I truly just want the, the success for you in whatever that looks like for you. Um, but yeah, please know that you should be in a really positive state. You should be in a good place metabolically. Um, if you have been kind of the person I described who's chronically dieting and never really got anywhere, um, I would encourage you to figure out what your maintenance calories would be. And if you are sustaining weight at less than 25% of that maintenance, then I encourage you to not do fat loss. I encourage you to work on a reverse diet until you're metabolically healthy um, to embark on that. So I'm just meaning if you're if your metabolic rate is supposed to be 2300 and it's currently you're currently at 1500 calories and you're not losing any weight right now that's a sign that you should not be embarking on a fat loss journey right now but that doesn't mean you can't in the future it's just getting you to see that long-term goal and when you're embarking on a fat loss goal you need to want it so badly like it can't be like a, yeah i could lose some weight you want you need to want it more than you want to breathe Maybe not that much, but it should be like very, very deep in your heart, something that you truly need to achieve. And you need to know why, because it is going to get hard and you need to have a strong reason to stick to it when it does get hard. When the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, that is when we change. So I hope if you're someone who has struggled with this yo-yo cycle in the past, that you're ready for change, you're ready to stop the fad diets, you're ready to stop the four weeks 
in the plan and then giving up. Um, I hope you're ready to stop with the, the start and end dates and all of that stuff. And if you feel like you're ready for change, but you are still doing all your old habits, that is definitely a sign that you maybe are not ready for a change. And that's not a bad thing. I don't say it to defeat you. I just, I want to be realistic so we can come from a place that um, is gonna set you up for the most actual success in the future. And I also wanna mention if you're in this challenge and you got to the four week mark and now you've kind of fallen off for the last two, I want you to know that this is completely normal. This is the time when it starts to get uncomfortable. Um, and you just need to kind of regroup and gather yourself and continue. Um, the worst thing you can do is think, oh, I just fell off and now I'm done and now I'm just gonna quit. This getting to this point and then stopping is completely normal, but what you need to do is pick yourself up and keep going now. So the things that we have laid out here are not complicated. It's not a big thing you need to get started. Just start adding more protein in your meals, start adding more veggies, um, make sure you're drinking enough water in a day and do all those habits and just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I can't say that enough. Um, if you are in a calorie deficit or making a big life change and it's not uncomfortable at some point in time, then you're probably not doing it right. So if you're in a calorie deficit and you're trying to lose body fat and you get to a place where you're like, I am so hungry, I'm so sick of this. Sometimes it depends how long you've been doing it, but sometimes you really just need to power through and kind of just take a step back and be like, okay, this is hard because this is going on in my body. I'm fighting a natural thing here um, because I'm trying to lose weight and my body thinks that I'm in a state of starvation. Um, or famine and I need to just power through this and stick to my calorie deficit and the weight will come off. Um, so yeah, just know that it's okay to be uncomfortable, it's okay to be frustrated and it's supposed to at some point in time get really, really hard, but that doesn't mean you need to quit and it doesn't mean you need to be frustrated. I mean, you're allowed to be frustrated, but don't let it last too long and just know that there are gonna be times that you kind of slip up, that you slow down, um, but it definitely doesn't mean that you need to completely stop and it doesn't mean that you failed. This is totally normal, this is how it goes. The people who have success are the ones that just pick themselves back up eventually and keep going. Um, and if you're kind of wondering like, okay, like, but I haven't been doing this for a few weeks now, like how do I pick myself back up? It doesn't need to be this big, like I'm gonna start on Monday and I'm gonna like start training hard, I'm gonna do all these things just start right now. Like you don't need to start at the beginning of the month. You don't need to start at the beginning of the week. You can just start right now. Just make one positive choice that's going to move you forward. Maybe that's picking up your water bottle right now and having a sip of water. Maybe it's scheduling a class. Maybe it's swapping out something that you're gonna eat with a vegetable or a fruit today, or maybe it's just putting more protein in your meals. It doesn't need to be anything very extreme. It just needs to be something that's moving you in the direction that you wanna go. One thing I just wanna reiterate right before I quit here, I know this video is getting long. Um, eating healthy does not necessarily mean fat loss and you do not need to only eat healthy to have fat loss. So I encourage you that if you just, you don't need to lose weight, you don't wanna lose weight, um, I still encourage you to do the things that we have set out in our challenge here because they are very important. And I also wanna mention that losing weight and achieving your ideal physique is also not gonna to lead to happiness. So that I think that is a mistake that some people make. They think when they get better that all their problems are gonna go away and they're gonna feel happy. Um, it starts within you long before the outside of your body is going to change. Um, losing weight definitely is going to improve your health. It might improve self-image a little bit, but it's not going to be the be-all end-all for happiness. So I hope you guys took a lot away from this video. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out and just to reiter reiterate one more time, this is not the end of our thing. This is not a start end date at six weeks. This whole six weeks was an opportunity for us to teach you as much as we could so you could keep going throughout the rest of the year, um, throughout your fitness journey and continue to make the progress that you are looking to make. 
And also, I know we talked a lot about fat loss in this challenge, but if you're thinking like, you know what, I'm just really enjoying training and I just wanna feel really good, um, feel free to reach out and we can talk about if you're eating enough to support muscle gain and performance gain and all that stuff. Um, fat loss is always kind of the, the topic that people want to hear about. Um, but I do know that there are many of you out there who have other interests and doing, having a nutrition coach and doing this kind of stuff goes far beyond just like losing weight. So if you want to get better in the gym, um, if you want to feel better, have better sleep, all those things, or just look better, whatever. Feel free to reach out and we will help you with all of those things.